Hi, this is Dave Kale. Welcome to our Practical Wisdom series of podcasts where we try to provide wisdom and resources and focus on helping sales professionals and business executives sell better, lead better, and live better. Hi, this is Dave. Hey, here's a question for you. Are things in your business changing rapidly? And I know you're thinking, well, come on, Kale, that's a silly question. Of course they're changing Rapid change is the distinguishing characteristic of our times. Now, if you take that rapid change and add to it growing competition, increasing complexity, consolidations at every level, and increasing demands from customers, and you had the recipe for a business climate that will turn anyone's hair gray. This, this rapid change whirling around every company puts great pressure on organizations to change themselves. Not only must the organization as a whole change, but the individuals within each organization must themselves change, learn, and grow more rapidly today than at any time in the past. This ability for an organization and its people to change in response to the changing world around them may be the ultimate success skill for the information age. You know, a few years ago, it was good enough to allow learning and change to happen on a hit or miss fashion. Not, not so today. If your organization and your employees are going to change as rapidly as the environment, they're going to have to get serious and dedicated and systematic about making those changes. And that means that you must organize and manage an effort to stimulate and support positive personal change. In other words, organizations, including yours, need to develop a new capability, the capability to change rapidly. Now, you know, every, every organization has a unique set of capabilities. Whilst some of these are necessary for any successful business, others are unique to that individual concern. For example, every business must be capable of accounting for its money. Every business must be capable of generating sales. Every business must be capable of providing the goods and services its customers want. Those are, those are universal and basic capabilities. If your organization cannot do those, you, you, know, you just won't be in business. However, the real strength of the business comes from those capabilities that are unique to it, that differentiate that business from its competitors. Now, some, business, some businesses have created great research and development capacity, for example. Others are outstanding at customer service. Others emphasize quality. Some are outstanding in sales and others in marketing and still others in management. So one way to prepare your organization for our rapidly changing world is to develop a unique and a new capability. This is what I call active learning. Okay, so, so what is active learning and why, why is it important? Well, here's the definition. Active learning is the process of acquiring new information and or gaining new insights and then changing your behavior as a result. Now, you've experienced it. It's, it's what happens when you go to a seminar or a conference and, you, and you, gain, you gain several new ideas and you come back and implement those ideas. Active learning takes place at different levels within an organization, but they're all dependent on an individual employee changing how he or she behaves. The employee who is adept at active learning regularly absorbs new information and acts in different ways as a result. It's the same process you engage in when you attend a seminar, except that it's required of every one of your employees, not just you. So here's an everyday example. Let's say you upgraded your software to the next round of upgrades. Now, every employee who works with that software must take in new information, the changes in the software, and then they must change his or her behavior to correspond with the new information because, you know, they have to now use the software. So the learning process requires that they do something differently than they did before. Now, there's a, there's a fundamental and powerful concept underneath the surface of this simple example. Learning to use this software upgrade is not a one-time event. There will be other upgrades, and they'll happen more and more frequently. And your employees will have to learn again and again and again. Now, while the computer upgrade is an easily identified culprit, 
The reality is the kind of regular change epitomized by the software will likely occur in every aspect of the employee's job. Software will change, customers will change, products will change, bosses will change, coworkers will change, strategy will change, policies will change, procedures will change. And if they don't, then your organization is in danger of becoming a dinosaur wonderfully equipped to deal with a world that no longer exists. One of my clients uh, summarizes it accurately when he tells every new hire this, quote, the only thing I can guarantee you is that you won't be doing the job you're hired to do a year from now. Either the job will have changed in such a way as to be significantly different, or you will have grown to take on new responsibilities. In this kind of environment, it's easy to see that the companies who will be most successful are those who have filled their offices and cubicles with individuals who are willing, able, and skilled in learning. Now, that's a good thing to keep in mind where, whenever you're hiring, hire, hire well, and eventually you, you will evolve into a learning organization. In the meantime, you've got to work with the employees you have. Unfortunately, not all of them are change-friendly. Many were educated in slower times, and they view change as a threat to their position and their status. Many resent every attempt to get them to do something differently. Clearly, some organizations, some groups, and some individuals are better at active learning than others are. And while it's true that everyone can learn, it's just as true that not everyone can learn equally, quickly, and effectively. So this ability to learn, to learn quickly, to learn effectively, and to learn continuously will be one of the most powerful capabilities of any organization that hopes to succeed in our rapidly changing times. So why is this such an important new competency for the information age? Well, number one, we have seen the economic environment change dramatically just in the last few years. And, and every futurist I read or listen to has predicted that the rate of change will continue to accelerate in the near future. That means that if you've witnessed a great deal of change in your business environment, you probably have seen nothing yet. The ability to change your organization and all the individuals will become ever more important. Those organizations, groups, and individuals who excel at learning will have a strategic advantage over those that are slower to change. Not, not only is the institutionalized competency of active learning, not only is that a strategic imperative, but it is also a powerful fringe benefit for your employees. One of the biggest problems for growing organizations in the last few years has been the challenge, uh, has been the challenge of attracting and retaining good employees. And one of the things that attracts employees to an organization is the perception that the organization is headed for success and is willing to invest in its employees along the way. Helping your employees gain new skills or deepen their current capabilities is a powerful way to show your commitment to the future and your investment in your employees. Helping them learn to learn is viewed as a powerful fringe benefit. So creating this learning capability within your organization and instilling it at every level in the organization provides a double benefit. It's both a strategic advantage as well as a powerful fringe benefit. So, you know, all this sounds good, but, but how do you do it? So here's, here's four simple steps to take to start the transformation to becoming an active learning organization. So first one is vision. You know, you, you just, you've heard it before. You need to develop a compelling vision for the company's future, and you need to show your employees how they can be a part of it. A, a vision is a description of what the company can be in the future. By describing a future that's different than today's, you provide a reason for every individual to grow. The organization needs them to become something better than they are now. The difference between your vision for the future and your current situation is clearly an opportunity for the different pieces of the business to grow and expand. One of, one of the core principles upon which active learning is based is this, adults don't learn 
unless they want to eliminate some pain or achieve some gain. And as long as everyone is content with the status quo, there can be no serious growth your job, if you're going to build this capability of active learning, is first to instill some discontent. The individuals within your organization must want to be something that they are not now. The individuals within your organization must want to be something that they are not now. The more challenging and exciting is that vision, the more likely it is that the individual will want to hop aboard and be motivated to change. So... Challenge the organization with your, vision, with your vision of the future and see to it that every individual knows that you expect him or her to grow in their job so that they can be a part of it. That's number one, vision. Number two, enable. It is not enough merely to instill the vision. You must also enable the learning. That means that you must invest time and money in the learning process. That can mean something as simple as creating a budget item for training and learning and allocating money for this process. It can also mean creating policies that reimburse employees for job-related learning. It can mean investing in outside trainers and classes and courses and continuous growth programs. It can also mean policies that allow for release time for seminars, retreats, and training programs. You've got to enable it. Number three, mandate. So number one, vision. Number two, enable. Number three, mandate. What do we mean by that? Well, begin to instill this capability in your organization by mandating personal growth. Write it into every job description. A phrase that says every employee is expected to continually learn expected to continually grow in their capabilities, do this job better, as well as to expand their knowledge of other jobs within the organization. Write it into the job description. Make learning a strategic initiative. Manage it like you would any other strategic issue. Give it lots of conversation. Mention it in newsletters and memos. Write it up in the annual report. Talk about it at employee meetings. Create learning lists for individuals in small groups. Let everyone know from the top to the bottom that continuous personal improvement is a necessary part of everyone's employment in your organization. Let everyone know that coasting along with last year's knowledge and last year's capabilities is no longer acceptable. Mandate it. And number four, so we have vision, enable, mandate, and number four is model. So lastly, be a model of the kind of behavior you expect everyone with your, within your organization to mimic. Let people see you learning and growing. Let them see you invest in your own development. Let them see you go to seminars, be involved in CEO roundtables, read books, read periodicals, go to training courses, become a model of the kind of active learner you want your whole organization to be. So there's four steps to take to begin to instill what I believe is the number one competency for success in the information age that ability to turn your organization and every individual in it into an active learning organization. Okay, that's it. We're done. Bye-bye.